Hare Krishna. I'm grateful to be here amongst all of you today. And I will speak on the topic of hold your plans lightly, not tightly. So I'll speak this in three plans, three parts. How, what our the purpose of our plans is, how our plans are meant to serve Krishna and how we need to surrender our plans to Krishna. So let's look at the first point. For all of us, we human beings have this capacity to shape reality according to our plans and intentions. So if I am here and reality is here, say for example a person wants, now many of you are aspiring to help in this glorious new temple project. So the idea is that there is a place and the reality is right now it's simply a land but we are here and now we want to shape reality in a particular way. So our plans can help us to shape reality. So reality is here, we are here and our plan is from here to here to shape the reality. And making plans and then executing those plans is a way in which we human beings can work in an organized way. Now, non-human beings, animals cannot make conscious plans. Animals can make complex artistic nests or how uh, abodes for themselves but it's not a conscious plan it's a programmed instinct we human beings can make conscious plans and act accordingly however sometimes say we are here the reality is here the plan is here sometimes what happens is the reality goes completely in a different direction so what happens is say we are here we are here the plan is here and the reality goes here so at that time the plan starts coming in the way of our dealing with reality let me give an example suppose somebody wants to learn rowing and so they go to a rowing course and they learn rowing and they have a they have a dream that they will call all their friends and their relatives and in front of them they will row smoothly and the boat will zoom forward and everybody will click photos and it will be on their Facebook page and everybody will applaud. Oh, how nicely you row. And they have this whole movie inside their mind and then they get into the boat and they start rowing. And when they start rowing, suddenly a monster wave comes from nowhere. And the next moment, they have no oars in their hands and there is no boat below them. They are in the water. Now, if they keep rowing, there is no boat and no oars. If they keep rowing, what will happen? They will drown. So at that time, they need to immediately recalibrate. Oh, this happened. I have to deal with the reality. And the reality however unpalatable it is it is what it is now so i have to swim and get back to the coast oh but what about my plan no okay you wanted to do it but reality has turned differently now so let go so if we become too attached to our plans if we hold on to our plans too tightly the result is that the plans instead of helping us shape reality the plans start obstructing our ab ability to face reality. So if I am here, if I were here and the plan is here and the reality is here, the plan can help me to shape reality. But if instead I am here now, the reality is here and the plan has gone somewhere else completely. So if I am dealing with the plan, oh why is this not happening, why is this not happening, why is this not happening? Then I can't deal with the reality. So sometimes life just turns in such a way that our plans go for a toss. When that happens, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is lost. But at that particular point, we need to recalibrate. Oh. Now, how do I deal with the situation as it is now? So, plans can either help us to deal with reality, to shape reality, or plans can come in the way of 
dealing with reality and we see in the ramayana we just had ram nam a few months ago a few weeks ago almost so in the ramayana what happens ram is about to become the king the prince regent and then the king and for no fault of his suddenly he sent out the kingdom to the forest with absolutely nothing now exile is a very brutal punishment it is just one level below the worst punishment that is execution in execution everything including your, your life itself is taken away in exile everything except one's life is taken away so he just has to go into the forest with nothing it's it's inconceivable actually for most of us probably the nearest we might come to appreciating exile is if some of us are on visa in america and the visa is not extended <laughs> suddenly i have to leave the country hey, but i have my job i have my life i have my social circle i have my career over here but you have to go but even that is nowhere near ram's condition because we can just we have our home country we have our family there we have a place over there and even when we, a visa is not extended we still have financial resources social resources so many things to fall back on but ram he had nothing with him at all so how how does one process a situation like that generally to the extent we are unable to face reality to that extent we start becoming mentally imbalanced the madness is not just a disease when you say somebody is mad now what does that mean you could say sometimes it's a it's like a men, mental disorder but what does it mean literally see all of us have a movie going on inside our mind and in that movie we have dreams we have visions we have plans we have aspirations and so our plan it exists in the mind and then from there we try to bring it into reality so if we get more caught in the mind than with the world then we start getting disconnected disconnected disoriented now cricket season is coming up we have the ipl going on and the world cup is going to come so you know, sometimes you might see some young people at least in india i have seen some young men are walking along the road and suddenly they imagine that they are the next virat kohli hitting a match winning sixer and now you look around there is no bat there is no ball there is no match but the match is going on in their head in their mind and so they are responding not to the physical reality but the mental reality so it happens to uh, sometimes we may just some people start talking with themselves say who are you talking with he says oh i thought somebody is here so so to the extent a person starts connecting more and more with only their own mind now the mind is a connection by which we can connect with the world outside is the means by which you connect with the world outside but if you start connecting only with the mind and not with the world that is where a person starts going towards insanity so insanity is not a state but it is a spectrum and to some extent everybody has a certain level of insanity and it's not necessarily always a bad thing because if anybody has a visionary they have strong dreams and then they work to implement those dreams but the fact is that if we live only in our head, only with the plan the dream the movie and not with the world then we will become disoriented so if we hold on to the plans very tightly say for example now this is a case now 
is it imagine if this were a screen on which there is some image of what I want to see maybe say the way I want my family to be the way I want my career to be the way I want people around me to be or even the way I want myself to be in future this is the image now I can have this I can look at it and I can look at the world and I can think how can I make myself like this or how can I make things like this but the closer and closer and closer I bring it here if I bring it like this then I can't see anything except this and this is the result of holding on to plans too tightly if we hold on to plans too tightly we become blind to reality now if somebody has no plans at all what happens you know, if we don't have a plan then we end up becoming servants of those who have a plan so which is also not bad if that person is benevolent if that person is visionary then we work and we help them bring out a plan that's good but the thing is excessive attachment to plans can blind us to reality so we need to hold on to our plans lightly not tightly that's the first point i was going to make is this that our plans are meant to help us shape reality not obstruct our perception of reality so now when we are practicing bhakti when we are trying to uh, connect ourselves with krishna connect others with krishna at that time what is the role of plans so we see that shri prabhupad is a great example for us at the age of nearly 70 all alone he came from india to america with nothing except 40 rupees and with he knew nobody he came now did he have a plan did he literally know whom i am going to meet here and i am going to talk this way and i am going to do this no so there is a difference between a plan and a purpose purpose is ultimately what we want to achieve it's like the direction in which i want to go the plan is the path i am going to take to that purpose to a path in that direction so we need to be focused more on our purpose than on our plan <coughs> just like say if if just now i came from new york to this program so if we were using google maps google maps might say okay this path it takes 55 minutes this path 1 hour 5 minutes this path 1 hour 15 minutes okay now we may choose the path which takes 55 minutes so the purpose is to get here now the plan is okay we are taking this 55 minute path but sometimes there might be traffic or there might be an accident and then suddenly 55 minutes might change to 1 hour 55 minutes oh. then i need to recalibrate okay this is not going to work let me go this so there is a plan and there is a purpose if you become too attached to the plan then not only sometimes some roads just get blocked and we just we might spend the rest of our life trying to remove the blockage from the road and it may not get removed so our focus needs to be more on the purpose purpose is what am i trying to do so okay i want to serve krishna i want to help others connect with krishna to serve krishna we all want to we are all souls on the multi life journey of spiritual evolution we are all meant to evolve in our devotion to krishna and as we are moving toward krishna we also want to make a contribution in the world in whatever way we can according to our talents according to our positions according to our resources the bhagavad gita gives the example yathana dinam bahavam vega samudrame va bhimukha dravante so just as the river moves toward the ocean similarly it says we all are moving towards the ocean now what is that ocean that ocean is ultimately god krishna and our consciousness is meant to flow towards him now <clears throat> vedanta deshika is a prominent commentator in the shri vishnu sampradaya and he writes on this uh, verse that ultimately at the end of life everybody is going to die however we live as materialists or spiritualists whatever way but he says 
a spiritualist life is like a rivers flow a river will flow to the ocean but while flowing to the ocean the river will irrigate all the land around it similarly one who lives spiritually they will go toward god but their their goal is not just to go toward god it is while going towards god they also want to contribute they also want to connect others with god they also want to use their god given talents in serving god talents resources interests gifts connections whatever we have so that's just that the river keeps moving toward the ocean now the river is a very good example because the river is again not attached to a path if there is a particular path and there is a blockage and the river will find if not this way this way above below around or eventually it's erode and move on so similarly our consciousness is meant to move toward the lord so we need to focus more on the purpose than on the plan the plan is important but important in fulfilling the purpose now the purpose is that we want to move closer to krishna we want to take others closer to krishna and whatever gifts krishna has given us we want to use them for doing good in the world once we have this big picture clear this is the purpose then we see that my plan is a subset of krishna's plan sometimes it is said that if you want to uh, if you want to make krishna laugh tell him your plans well um, it you have to see this is actually not a shastric statement this is a statement by an american comedian <laughs> you want to make god laugh tell him your plans but the what, what it means and what it does not mean what it means is that sometimes we think that we have far greater capacity to control things than what we actually have mm? and because of that we am i oh, i'll do this i'll do that i'll do that we make this happen make that happen make that happen but our capacity to control is so tiny we think i will shake the whole world but then if we have a itch on our back we can't even reach that <laughs> so if we think i want to control big big things that is how that imagining that i am a big controller that is what can make god laugh but at the same time what it does not mean is that we don't make plans actually planning is an indication of seriousness when we are doing something seriously we plan about it so we plan with primarily to express the seriousness of our intent to krishna i take this seriously that's why i plan it now about 10 years ago about 20 25 years ago when i started speaking uh, for krishna in public so a senior devotee gave me some guidelines about how to speak for krishna in public so the 10th last the 10th guide last the guideline was depend on krishna but in bracket depend on krishna but only after you have prepared <laughs> oh that means if i am going to take the service of krishna speaking for krishna seriously i have to prepare what i am going to speak at the same time we have to depend on krishna so the point here is planning indicates seriousness and we plan in a mood of service to krishna so our purpose is to connect with krishna to serve krishna and our plan is for the service of krishna so then this first point which i said hold on to your plans lightly not tightly how can we implement that that's what i'm talking in the second and third part if we understand my planning is for the service of krishna and if the plan i become so attached to it and if the plan doesn't work then i start becoming bitter i start becoming resentful i start becoming uh, angry and then my consciousness is no longer devotional even if i get my plan executed how much am i going to please krishna how much am i going to go closer to krishna so our plan is a service to krishna but most important service to krishna is our consciousness if you become too attached to the plan and then that attachment generally if something doesn't work we become angry anger can be expressed in different ways anger is usually expressed toward other people and sometimes we are angry with one person 
but we express the anger towards someone else and that person is they speak something which is like a 1% issue and our reaction is 10000% hey what did i do or now there is another way of expressing anger is toward oneself see depression inferiority complex and ultimately suicide these are all expressions of anger toward oneself this is what i wanted to do and i can't do it i'm worthless i'm useless so of course the ultimately destructive form of anger is anger toward god so now bhakti sanat thakur says that bhakti sanat thakur is the guru of shila prabhupada he says becoming angry at destiny is angry at fate at destiny at god that is like spitting at the sky <laughs> what happens <laughs> the spit will come on our face only <laughs> so it's of no use so basically when we hold on to the plan too tightly and it is not working we become angry either towards others or towards ourselves or towards god and that anger leads to bitterness to resentment and then our consciousness no longer remains devotional so so our plan should not become so important for us that our consciousness doesn't matter for us then it is becoming a disservice to krishna so that is the second point we in bhakti we plan as a service to krishna and that's why the service attitude needs to be maintained the third point is that when our plan is not working that means krishna has some better plan in nature krishna often breaks things to make them better if you look at clouds the clouds may look very beautiful in the sky but the clouds need to be broken for rains to come and is parjanya nanna sambhava it is by the rains that all living beings subsist now the if you look from the sky the ground may look very beautiful but if you want to do irrigation we need to plow plow means we have to break the land then eventually grains come now when the grains grow the crops which are uh, the crops look very attractive but they all have to be cut then eventually we grind the grains out also the grains have to be broken again so that we make flour and then the flour is used to make food now sometimes if there are some special occasions Now, when some devotees serve food, the plate is itself made in such an artistic way. Each item is placed so beautifully. Sometimes, you know, eating that food seems like committing violence to the art. It's so artistic. But unless you eat it, you know, how are you going to get nourished? So, in general, we look at this in nature that nature breaks things to make them better. and the same thing that might be a protection at one stage can become an obstruction at another stage when a bird gives birth to a baby the baby is born inside inside what an egg, an egg. <laughs> now that egg actually protects the baby if the generally you know, the way amphibia the way the aquarian species grows is that if their baby were born naturally into the world like mammals are born they would not survive so for the bird babies the shell is a necessary protection but as the baby grows then that shell which is a protector becomes an obstruction and in the baby has to make great effort the baby bird inside sometimes you you see a as you see a egg you know suddenly a crack appears and then a small part of a feather of or a wing of the bird comes out and then that part of the wing gets trapped between the two edges of the shell and you can almost feel the infant the baby bird screaming in pain inside and keeps pushing keeps pushing keeps pushing and eventually the bird breaks the 
shell and comes out so the point here is the plan we have is like a shell and sometimes the plan guides us but sometimes the plan obstructs us and the plan may need to be broken what does it mean so then how do we move on at such times if we had a particular plan and the plan is broken then we need some guide how do we move on that is where our service attitude comes into the picture our plan is like a street light or a series of street lights if you want to go along a path and our plan is like a series of street lights it shows this is the way i'm going to go ahead but sometimes the street lights just go off hey, what do i do the road is dark i can't see anything what do i do so we might for a few moments curse and rant and feel sorry for ourselves but what do you do after that there are two kinds of people in the world some people are wise and some are otherwise <laughs> <laughs> so those who are otherwise they keep complaining they keep ranting they keep feeling sorry for themselves and they make their in the darkness they make their own life miserable and they make others life miserable but those who are wise they will turn on their flesh take out the flashlight the flashlight cannot replace the street light but the flashlight can show us one step ahead and you take it one step ahead and the flashlight will show the next step ahead and you move the next step ahead and the flashlight shows one step ahead so that flashlight is our service attitude service attitude means so it's at the, at the most essential level service attitude means simply the question how can i serve you now so when something unexpected something undesirable happens at that time the first question that comes in our mind why why is this happening why is this person doing like this why is this happening like this why 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 now when possible we can try to find a logical answer for that why question and move on but sometimes the why question just doesn't have any answer so as you keep thinking keep thinking and it just makes us more confused more miserable more resentful so some people they have what is called paralysis by analysis see i was confused earlier now i'm not so sure <laughs> so what happens is that if we get if you understand this point that i just need to move on the why question if it is not giving me an answer then put it aside why do people behave in a particular way we don't know that's what ram lakshman is the so i talk about his wise and otherwise so of course lakshman is a transcendental character but lakshman at that time is like a typical angry young man and he says how dare this atrocity happen to you ram what wrong have you ever done to anyone he gets so angry he first gets angry with dashrath and he says dashrath has become blinded by lust for his youngest queen and that's why he has done this he says we should rebel against the king ram says i i was with my father and i saw how distressed he was he is getting no pleasure in this he is compelled by his wow lakshman says we never heard of this vow till now where did this vow come from he said i am saying that a father who is always so honorable is lying about this then lakshman lakshman is angry so you have to find someone to be angry about so he gets angry about kai kai and he says no she is so cruel no she pretended to love you but just see how she has turned out to be says you remember how her love was she loved me just like my mother kaushalya her love for me was just like the flow of the ganga river pure ceaselessly flowing lakshman is still angry says that's what i can't understand how did the ganga dry up in one night and then ram says 
That's why when I saw this, I understood this is the will of destiny. Normally, we try to find a cause of a connection. A leads to B. But if A is a small cause and B is a big reaction, this is just not proportional. Why is this happening? That means it's not just A leading to B. There is destiny involved. So Ram, uh, Lakshman, at that time Ram says, when he says destiny, Lakshman is still angry. Lakshman says, actually, it's only cowards who uh, accept injustice as destiny. Heroes fight against it. So then Ram says, I'm not, I'm concerned about what is my duty. As a duty to my father, I was ready to ascend the throne. As a duty to my father, now I'll go to the forest. So this brings us again to the point of service attitude. Ram is also exhibiting the service attitude. So when we have this service attitude, then if things are going wrong, okay, why is this happening? You know, it just doesn't make sense. So instead of the why question, okay, it's destiny. It's not understandable right now. How can I serve you now, Krishna? Just focus on the next step, okay? Okay, let me do, let me act in a way that doesn't make things worse. See, when some big things have gone wrong in our life, to think about the long-term future is very disorienting. It just doesn't work at that time. There are too many variables over there. So the best, during, during unmanageably bad times, now it's best to reduce our frame of reference to manageable units of time. Instead of thinking in terms of what will happen after one year, what will happen after uh, six months, what will happen after ten years, say, we are, di we are suddenly diagnosed with some disease, terrible disease, what will happen to my family, what will happen to my job, what will happen to this, what will happen? Okay, calm down. Don't think, there's too many variables over here. Focus on a short term. Short term means what? Divide it into manageable units of time. Okay, what can I do in the next one hour so that I don't make things worse? What can I do in the next one day so that on one side I don't make things worse, I make things better. That is the service attitude. Service attitude is, I don't know what is going to happen next, but what next step can I take now? That's like our flashlight. So when the dark times come, we need this flashlight. That is our service attitude. Krishna, how can I serve you now? And if you hold on to this attitude, Krishna, then those dark times which are there, now they may seem, when we are in those dark times, they may seem like a dungeon. It's like I am trapped in this dark time. But it is not a dungeon. It is a tunnel. And the tunnel will end. And there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And then we will find that whatever happened, now our plan was broken, but Krishna had some bigger plan. And when that bigger plan emerges, we will see that what went wrong was a part, was a necessary part of something more right to emerge. So that is the important thing that we need to keep in mind. So we hold on to our plans lightly, not tightly. When we do this, bad things happen in life. But Krishna is so expert that he can bring good even out of the bad. He can, he's expert in fact at bringing good out of the bad. So when we keep that vision, don't just look at our frustrated plans, but look at Krishna and try to cultivate service attitude. And Krishna will bring us to a better place. Not only than what we were in the past, and much more than what we are in the present. And that is Krishna's magic. So when we open ourselves to Krishna's magic with our service attitude, then Krishna reveals that he is Yogeshwara, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna. And he can bring good even out of things that appear to be totally bad. Provided we don't make them worse by our resentment, by our negativity. But we do our part in doing maintaining service attitude and Krishna will take care of the whole. So we play the part of the part and let the whole take care of the whole. So I'll summarize what I spoke today. I spoke on the topic of hold your plans lightly, not tightly. Three points. First is what is what is the role of plans in our life? Plans help us to shape reality 
to in a in a better way so between us and our reality is the plan but sometimes reality becomes so different that the plan and the reality are in two opposite direction like we want to row but a wave means that there are no oars and there's no boat so then we need to recalibrate if we are too attached to our plans then the, that can blind us from facing reality so insanity can happen when we become so attached to the plan that we start denying reality so insanity is not just a state but it's a spectrum so we need to hold our plans lightly so that we don't get blinded by the plan and then I, in bhakti we plan as a service to krishna but our most important service is to have a consciousness that is positive that is devotional and if we become too attached to our plan and the plan doesn't work then we become resentful cynical bitter and then our conscious in the name of doing service to krishna our consciousness becomes a disservice to krishna so at that time what do we do we and we focus on our service attitude and let krishna's plan work so rather than so i moved from being attached to a plan to being attached to the purpose the purpose is to serve krishna and to Uh, help others connect with Krishna using whatever abilities we have. So river is more attached to going to the ocean than a particular path by which it goes to the ocean. And if there is a block, then our moving forward is service attitude. So plan, purpose, and service attitude. So when some plans go wrong, we could keep asking the question, why, 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 and that will only frustrate us. So we change the question to how. how can i serve you now and when the street lights go off that how question become like a flashlight it shows us one step ahead one step ahead and if during unmanageably bad times if we start thinking about the long term future there's so many variables that we will get confused and disheartened so just reduce the working frame of reference to manageable units of time just one hour one day let me move forward move forward and krishna often breaks things to make them better as clouds ground grains food bird in a shell that which is protecting at one time can be restricting at another time so we need to let krishna's plan act by maintaining our service attitude so we play the part of our part and krishna will play krishna will the whole will take care of the whole Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any one quick question? Okay. How, um, okay. Where, where is the question? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So to focus on the present, what should we focus? Seek mental peace because yeah. that is what Bhagavad Gita is also telling us. Yeah. Okay. Seek mental peace and be selfless in our plan to that journey. What may we select first? Who, what, when, why? And okay. And even how also. Are yeah. So who, what, when, why, how? What should we focus on yes. uh, during when we are having these disturbing times or plans are disrupted? See, the whole idea is that we need to keep moving, keep flowing, and in some situations, the why question helps. In some question, some situations, it doesn't help. A life is like a war against a elusive enemy. One of my friends is in doing HIV research. One of the reasons why HIV is so difficult to cure is because it's a, it keeps mutating. so in life you cannot go with one formula okay this question i ask i'll get the answer and i'll move on so the bhagavad gita actually begins when arjuna is disoriented what to do the bhagavad gita gives the who question who are you so we all have various functional roles in life so if now you may have, you may have a role as a mother you may have a role as a professional you may have a role as a daughter you may role have as a role as a wife you may have a role as a sister whatever you all have different roles so sometimes these roles pull us in different directions 
So beyond our functional roles, so below our functional roles, foundational to them is our foundational identity and that is we are souls who are parts of Krishna. So understand, so to the extent we identify ourselves with our roles, to that extent the frustration of our plans will be unbearable for us. If my whole sense of self-worth comes from the fact that I am a software engineer and then I lose my job, then who am I? I'll just not be able to bear it. So we need to go foundationally, who am I? I am a servant, I am a spirit soul who is a part of Krishna. I am here to serve Krishna. So my job is a service to Krishna. My family roles are a service to Krishna. So all these roles that we have, they are like channels by which the river of our consciousness is meant to move toward Krishna. So if we reduce that river to only one channel, if I identify myself by one role alone, say if I identify myself as a speaker and tomorrow I lose my voice, then what will I do? I, okay, I, I, I'm a speaker, but speaking is a service to Krishna. So if I can't serve in this way, I'll find some other way to serve. So if we ha have that fundamental un understanding of our identity, who am I? I'm a soul meant to serve Krishna on different roles. Then how, okay, this role is blocked, I can move on. So I would say who question comes first, then the how question. And that will help our consciousness to move on. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Yes, please. Prabhu, you answered very nicely. Full word, why? The letter W is necessary. W letter is necessary for asking all these. So, we stick to Krishna. Everything will be good. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay. That's a good question. So if a particular plan is obstructed, then when do we decide that I keep pushing on with this plan because Krishna is testing me or I should shift to some other plan? Yeah, I think that requires a pragmatic intelligence. I was I was just uh, two weeks ago I was in Stanford and I gave a talk over there and after that one American lady she came and she was talking with me and she said her daughter has been for 12 years in Stanford changing her major every year <laughs> to find out which is her calling in life. Now she's still in the first year, 12 years she's going on. Uh, yeah, no, it's good to it's good to try to find out one's calling, but life is not going to wait till we find our calling. Isn't it? So sometimes uh, a suboptimal plan is better for moving on than waiting for the optimal plan to find be found. So what I mean by that is that we cannot let ourselves be blocked. We have to keep moving on. And we can use our own God-given intelligence to decide uh, what is a reasonable effort. If a particular blockage is there, I, I want to move on with this. But okay, how much is a reasonable effort? Now we see Prabhupada and initially he started the League of Devotees. That time he had got a place and he was he had inaugurated that as the international headquarters of the League of Devotees. But then there was a whole clique against him, a whole conspiracy and he was he was told to leave from there. Now Prabhupada had the land deed with him and he could have fought. But he decided it's not worth it. Now his reasoning was that the people there were more pious than spiritual. He also felt Jhansi was not a very big city and he felt that it's not worth it. But then when something similar happened in Mumbai, when he had got a land and the person who sold him the land, he took the money and then he, took, he did not even give the papers properly. So in Prabhupada, he said, I will die rather than let this person cheat me of Krishna's Lakshmi. And Prabhupada fought. 
So broadly speaking, when things go wrong, we have three three alternatives. I call them tolerate, mitigate, or immigrate. <laughs> so we're like extremely cold in a particular place, and that's where we have got a job now. What do we do? Well, it, that's where your job is tolerate it. But you can't tolerate it; it's unbearable. Then mitigate. You know, get nice heating, get warm clothes in your home, in your car, have proper heating. Mitigate it. But if you can't, then immigrate. So all three are viable. Sometimes, okay, as long as I'm able to move forward in the purpose, okay, this is a tolerable irritation. But this is going beyond limits. I want to mitigate it. Or sometimes we feel this is just getting too messy. I walk. Away. Walking away is different from running away. When we immigrate, it is not so much out of frustration. It that okay? I have better things in my life than to keep fighting this. So again, if we are focused on our purpose, then we will ourselves get the intelligence of how much to spend on a particular plan. The Dhami Buddhi Yogam. It's good to find your calling, but to spend 12 years shifting in a first year of major is it ridiculous? So if we use if we stay focused on the purpose and look at our options. We can ourselves decide this is a reasonable amount of effort, and if within this much effort it works out, I have shown Krishna that this is what I can do, and I have done it. If it is not working, then okay, let it go. Maybe Krishna wants. So sometimes in the same situation. we may think that krishna is testing my determination but who knows krishna is testing our detachment so we can decide a reasonable amount of effort and if it doesn't work let go okay thank you okay shri prabhupada ki